Well, folks, that's a little bit of Blackberry Blossom using the bar position. Blackberry Blossom is just one of the all-time great fiddle tunes, and we've got three different versions of it here on the site. And this is probably, um, it's a little bit easier to play because we have, have to get into the melodic style to play the uh, full-fledged Blackberry Blossom, which is... But we don't need to deal with that right now. And this is a beautiful way to do it, working more with chords than with melody notes, per se. And uh, the main focus right now is going to be the bar position. So the bar position involves putting usually the index finger. Let's say you're at the, uh, the fifth fret here. That's a C chord. If you put your index finger across the first four strings at the fifth fret and push down hard, so you're hearing that all four those notes really clearly. You don't want try not to have a buzz. You have to press down hard enough to do that. And to do that, if you look, I have my middle finger sitting on top of my index finger. I just naturally started doing that many years ago because it adds a little more pressure, makes it a little bit easier to press down the strings. So we are at the C chord here at the fifth fret, pressing down with the index and the middle on top of the index to give a little extra force. Okay, here's a C chord, here's the second inversion of C up here, as it's called. And um, so the chords we're going to be working with, well, we'll have the open G chord, which is really a bar position. It's as if your index finger is pressing on top of the nut here. This is the nut, except you don't have to do it because the nut's there. So that's a bar position, really. Uh, so we're going to be dealing with that and then the C chord up here. But um, actually, the next chord I have here is, is an F position G chord. We've had the F chord already. This is the F position. It's the F up two frets, and I call it the F position because it's the same position as an F chord up between the third and fifth frets. Pinky on the first string, fifth fret. Index on the second string, third fret. Middle on the third string, fourth fret. And ring on the fourth string, fifth fret. You're not going to have to play that full chord. You can just play the first three strings of it. And then, um, let's see. And then the next inversion is the D inversion, which again, you're not going to have to play the full thing, but here's your D chord down here. And right up here, you'll have the pinky on the first string, ninth fret, index on the second string, eighth fret, index on the third string, seventh fret, ring on the fourth string, ninth fret. But again, we'll only be working off the first three strings for that. And then we have the bar D chord here, which is the same chord as this, but just up in the next inversion. When you have this D here, the third, second, and first strings are the first three strings, those notes. You hear on the second, third, and fourth strings, but when you bar with the seventh fret, you have the fourth, third, and second strings being the same note, but now you have this first string, seventh fret, you get the next higher note of the chord up here, and then down to the C chord that we already talked about. And then here's A at the second fret, because we're going to need an A chord here, because here's G. If you go up a half step, that's a G sharp, and here's A. Okay, and then of course, open G. And we need the D chord also, pinky on the first string, fourth fret, middle on the second string, third fret, index on the third string, second fret. And the full chord would be with the ring on the fourth string, fourth fret, or the open fourth string, which is that nice low D chord, sorry, low D note, which is a nice thing to have on the bottom of the D chord, because it really helps define the chord even better. 